But what is art is slaying the spire, at least in art form. How will the ironclad do it today? Hmm. There's only one decent looking three elite path. This one up the middle ish here. Combat event, combat event, combat. Any really good start for that? Remove a card could work. Remove two. Even better, actually. What does Ironclad remove two up? Two strikes? Guardian? Yeah, two strikes. Interesting. Minus two strikes. I don't dislike that. Ironclad can really, uh... Can really find a lot of attack cards to add. That are pretty good. Define art in a thousand words or less. Oh, I like that one, Suthis. Wonder if that was like a... Sometimes, very rarely, teachers will will put in like a really challenge question like that, where less might be, might be more when it comes to answering it. But pretty tricky. Hmm. Let's go with a hundred gold start here. Hit one of these early stores. Take a two elite path. It seems a lot more reasonable. I really do like the remove two start. Strikes are such a sad card for the clad. I'm just not convinced I can actually do this path with the remove two. Well, actually. Eh. Let's do it. Nice thing about Ironclad, even with two removed strikes, because you've got that bash, it's actually really easy to still draw three energy worth of attacks. Surprisingly so. Of course. The only attack I'm offered? I guess I'll take a shrug. As my first card. I'm really grateful, actually, that we ran into a Jawworm here. That's going to be another card reward before the first elite. And we should be able to stay on full health, thanks to Burning Blood. It's not that difficult. Hurry, McDurr, thanks for 14 moons of support. Being able to redraw a bash and play it while the enemy is still vulnerable is quite nice, too. Carnage. There we go. Carnage. Okay, we're, we're like, totally on track now. The Blabbening. We're going to be at full health, leaving our easy pool fights, too. I'm a certified Flame Barrier fanatic, but I think we need one more decent damage card for this elite, so let's take a Twin Strike. Did I change my category? Yes, yes. You might need to refresh. I've noticed Twitch has been glitching out in that regard sometimes. Like, your category can update for some people, but not others. Manget, thanks for the two months. Got your first Ironclad win after watching the guide. Great content. Glad to hear it. I'm planning on recording our um, How to Kill the Heart as Defect on Saturday this week. I think I'll be recovered enough to want to make permanent content. Another remove? Let's go. I can remove a defend. That'd be a little bit safer for Gremlin Knob matchup here. And for sentries. Yeah, let's remove one defend. And we'll remove strikes from here on out. <laughs> Punished. Ow. Whatever. It's actually only six damage. We're fine. 
Draw it again. Carnage Shrug. Yeah. Get destroyed. Twin Strike, Drop Kick, Body Slam. I'd consider Body Slam more heavily if I hadn't removed a defend. I'm pretty happy actually skipping these three. We could go with a second copy of Twin Strike, but I don't think we want or need to. Nope. We could pick up Drop Kick as potentially part of a future infinite, actually. Kind of a crap drop kick for the moment, though. I think I'd rather not have it. Would I take a twin strike there if I'd removed a strike? Uh, be worth considering. Okay, this is not the draw you want to see turn one against Laga. I'm going to use the skill potion here. Uh, double tap or bloodletting or offering or seeing red could all lead to some really good things. And indeed, we do get offering. So let's offering. Bash. Carnage. Enjoy the eerie silence. And twin strike. Look at that damage output. Thanks to skill potion. So I could deal 38 damage next turn. There's no way we get a kill, right? So we're probably just going to defend Carnage. Yeah, and then I can kill it before it attacks me again. We shrug to guarantee a Carnage draw next turn, or even this turn, and bring it below Carnage range. Really seeing the power of the remove too already, just the fact that we can redraw Carnage like that is kind of obscene. Don't have an area damage card, which makes Cleave pretty good. Cleave is definitely better than a second Twin Strike. Armaments is not bad here either, since we took out one of our block cards. I'm actually really happy to add a Defend and to the deck. What glitched the sound? That's an, a vanilla Slay the Spire glitch. Sometimes the sound in Slay the Spire doesn't quite work right. It's uh, not coded entirely correctly. If, if you play too quickly, then it causes certain sounds to fail to unload from memory. That's my theory anyway. And once they reach a critical mass, it causes new sounds to fail to load sometimes. The faster you play and the longer you leave your Slay the Spire open, the more you will notice the effect. So if you try to speedrun for long sessions, you'll absolutely destroy the audio of the game. It just gets completely ruined. Do I have any programming knowledge? A little bit. I uh, I took computer programming way back in high school. I learned to code uh, Java, which is, I think, what Spire is written in. But uh, I opted not to pursue that further as I went into college. So I haven't coded since high school days. So next fight's either Knob or Sentries. Okay, I'm taking Cleave. I just need to say that out loud. This might be a Bash upgrade situation. But I think realistically we want to, up want to upgrade the Cleave for more area damage. Twin Strike upgrade's not too bad either. And I even advocate for upgrading Shrug in a situation like this. Upgrading your Block Plus card can be quite nice. Let's go with the Cleave upgrade. We'll really appreciate having that upgraded in Act 2. Hey, we got a strike. Okay, now I'll take the second twin strike. Strike dummies here. Cards containing the text strike deal three more damage. The, despite the fact that we were down a couple strikes, it's a really good relic. 
Twin Strike is now 8 times 2 upgraded. It would be 20 damage for 1 energy. That's a heck of a card. And we're going to find that with what we've added to the deck so far, almost everything just gets destroyed by us. This is 39. Probably just going to tank 10 here, play Cleave and Carnage. Just pretend like we're Watcher here for a second and, and follow the same logic. If we just kill them all on the first cycle, then the fight will be the easiest. Taking five more on this turn feels right as well. Get the middle guy so we can kill with Bash Strike next turn. And that will be enough, yeah, eight plus nine. Vulnerable doesn't happen, but the Strike Dummy makes it a kill. Nice. Okay, only 15 damage taken, that's good. Get a Darkstone Periapt and a Swift Potion. Offered a Perfected Strike. Now, now we can take the Armaments. I wanted the Armaments before. I still want it. It's like a Defend that upgrades a card in our hand. And with the small deck size, we'll be redrawing cards over and over again. Oof. I am not pleased to see you here, Mr. Merchant. But I don't mind paying for a card remove. True Grit's also interesting. A block card that exhausts another card can be very nice when the decks are already very small. Hm. <laughs> Del Arco says, if you transform an uncommon or a rare, do you have a higher chance to get an uncommon or rare? And the only rule with transforms is that you can't transform into the same card, and so... If you transform a rare, you have a slightly lower chance of getting a rare, because you can't get the rare that you just transformed. But other than that, no. Selling is an idea that comes up in the context of Slay the Spire a bit, and um, I don't think selling in Spire would be a particularly good approach. However, I think if you, if you wanted something like that, the better way to implement it mechanically is allow the player to skip the item in question to gain gold. Like, so if there's a potion on the ground, skip the potion, gain 10 gold would be your option. So you could get extra income from them. Uh, and that would be like a slight buff to Sozu too. would be pretty cool. Um, or skip the relic, gain 25 or 50 gold, depending on its rarity. Yeah, Mon and Monster Train and a couple other deck builders will do stuff like give you money for skipping cards too. So the key difference there is that you have to make the choice at the time of acquisition. You're not allowed to benefit from the item and then sell it later. So it, I think it raises the skill cap in that regard. Uh, which is another way of saying it makes it more difficult to, to figure out what to do. What am I doing here? I'm definitely going to remove a basic. I don't, I'm not sure about this. And it is going to be a strike going into Guardian here. Not sure about the, the True Grit. It's nice and cheap. I'm like exhausting defense or something. I'll take it. We'll figure it out. And I think we definitely go for another Relic at this stage. This deck is pretty good. Seems pretty good. Should be a nice easy fight. I bet we can gain six health here. Chonk and bonk. Actually, I could have done that a little better, I think, by not playing the Carnage at all. Oh, I also could have killed there. Whoops, that was 12 damage strike. Equally valid ways to get through the fight, though. An Entropic Brew Berserk? Second Wind Clash. 
I actually do not hate that Berserk at all. That is a fascinating Berserk. Berserk says, gain two Voln at the start of your turn, gain an energy. Also, we have Mummified Hand, so it's going to make a card in our hand free. That's pretty cool, actually. I'm going to give that a try. We'll definitely want to upgrade that quickly to be one vulnerable, but we can also use the armaments to, well, to do that, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Not the turn one I wanted. I'm okay with that, though. We'll just take some damage in this fight. Twin Strike kills you. Cleave kills you. So we actually only take one here. Okay. Like this. I should probably should have upgraded the cleave, huh? Great fight overall. Permanent strength gain seems good. Could have had like three of these. Yeah, spot weakness is really good here. Very good way to scale, especially with a small ironclad deck. And look at that. Berserk gonna put in work against the Lega here. Pretty cool. Give me energy or give me death. Excellent turn next turn. Once again, no music here. Tis the way of things. Lose six. Gain six. Works for me. Double Entropic Brew. And a Pommel Strike, which does 12 damage and draws a card. That seems very, very good. So here's what I advocate for, for doing potion-wise in this situation. We discard the Swift Potion, drink the Entropic Brew to get two new random potions, then choose one of these to keep, which is going to be the Heart of Iron, discard the other one, and now we have Heart of Iron and Entropic Brew. Which is probably better than Entropic Brew and Tropic Brew, I imagine. Mr. Munchy Tuna, thanks for the Prime sub and the two months. I actually remember to take the pommel strike. I did. Good. Did we lose his watcher? No, we absolutely destroyed the heart. I don't think I remember to upgrade the title though. No, I didn't. Okay. So good upgrades here, both Arma and Berserker good. I also like the pommel strike upgrade for more card draw. It's a pretty big priority for me. Let's upgrade the pummel. The blapping. Destroy, destroy. Show you a destroy. Okay, this is definitely not the time to play the Berserk, unfortunately, unless I draw the armaments here. No. Okay, well, that doesn't feel like the right time then. I don't want to be vulnerable for the six, uh, the eight by two. It'd be 12 times two next turn. Terrifying. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm cool at this stage losing Carnage. Though we probably are better off playing Pummel Strike. We take four retaliatory damage, but I'll likely draw a block card. 
if we feel like we need help, we got Heart of Iron. Hmm. All right. I'll use it here. This becomes seven times four. And I get to play the whole hand. We block for 19 plus six. We don't take that much. We get the Berserk in play. And I destroy the cleave? That's cool, too. Okay, yeah. Let's do it. Because we don't get attacked on this turn. On this turn, spot weakness works, and we'll, we'll crush the boss from here. fun. Twenty-five twice. That is a lot of damage for a twin strike to do. GG. Demon form, barricade, or corruption. Three powers with mummy hand. All cost three as well. Interesting set of options. Kind of happy with any of these. Corruption is amongst my favorite, but currently we don't have that many skills, which makes corruption kind of iffy. Which makes me want to lean more towards the barricade. I don't feel like I need the demon form because the, I have the spot weakness and pretty good card draw. So I, I'm genuinely thinking this is barricade. Give me a barricade. Good old barricade. And we're offered a hammer, stone, or crown. So, lack of upgrades means I deeply regret not having an upgraded armaments. The unupgraded armaments still could do pretty good work for us here. Philostone would mean more threatening enemies, but I can accumulate upgrades still. Buster Crown would make it very difficult to get more powers, particularly the ones that I think would make this run really good, like Dark Embrace or Feel No Pain, so definitely not taking a Busted Crown. I think Busted Crown also kind of penalized with Ceramic Fish, right? We're gaining money per card added, so we do have a good reason to add more cards. So between Hammer and Stone... Oddly compelled to go Hammer here. I really don't like Philostone with Barricade, because giving enemies extra strength while retaining block is counterproductive. I'm going to go with the uh, Hammer here. And we're just going to try to slay Elites all through Act 2. Deprioritize going to Rest Sites, up prioritize going to Elite Sites. Maybe go for the Burning Elite here. Actually looks pretty reasonable. We have huge damage, so we can absolutely destroy these fights. And I can take a heal after this Elite. Or this elite as needed. Yeah, I like going to this one. That shop. We'll have enough money to buy a relic there. Figure it out. Why are we prioritizing elites? Elites give us money, elites give us relics. And that is the way to, to sort of permanently scale up our strength in Slay the Spire, especially now that we can't get uh, upgrades at rest sites. Howdy, Ubla. Thanks for two metric years. Cheers. To the two years. All right, these stinky thieves are annoying. Gotta make sure we kill them. Playing barricade turn one didn't seem very reasonable there. 
28 plus 9, 37. Get him. Killing one of the two quickly makes this fight a lot more manageable. Nope, not that. This. Don't play that Berserk either. Potion's good. Body Slam, unupgraded, not very good. Upgraded Body Slam would be incredible here. I don't want to find a shovel. Oh yeah, or a, a Guria would be really good too. Strike is more damage than Bash, so we might as well shrug. Okay. Should be an easy fight for us too. Go for the next turn kill. Make my life super easy here. Can almost kill this turn. Ooh. Hmm. I get one mystery draw. I have to take the full 11, or I just have to use the potion. I think I use the potion. Play the true good here. And then kill on this turn with our fresh draw. There we go. Shame to lose our potion like that. That's okay. An upgraded uppercut's a little iffy, but still pretty decent here. It's another source of vulnerable, a good two cost attack. I think it's okay. Obviously, we prefer an upgraded one. Could look at two shops if I wanted to here, actually. We get one less combat, one less card reward, one less potion chance, but higher chance to find something we want. I don't think we have enough money to make that worthwhile, but I mean, we just, if we get something here that we want, we just go this way and it's the same total nodes. We get slightly less money for the first shop though. Um, what are the prices of things? Got an exclamation point shop command for this. 261 for an uncommon relic. Minimum. How much is a relic and a remove going to cost me? About 170 plus 100, right? No, that's too much, too. Get another 30 gold, we'd have 270. Well, actually, I might just barely have enough for relic remove if I go combat, combat here. That could be important. Hmm. Okay, let's we'll keep going this way. Hey, look, we actually got the Berserk to work for once. Properly like. So we're not vulnerable here. But we now have additional energy. Oh, yeah. Get bonked on. Fool. Wow. That was a good fight. All right. Well, definitely going to take Shockwave. I actually don't mind Shockwave and Uppercut both. But having a way to apply a weak and vulnerable to everybody is uh, very, very good in my book. Obscenely so. Snake plant's a little annoying. Glad we didn't take the Philosopher's Stone. We'd be losing a lot more health here. This is not a good draw, but maybe we can just kill next turn. Cool. Thunder clap. Even though it has an upgrade, I don't think it's worth it here. Second armaments? Don't think so. Maybe if I had a Dark Embrace and a Corruption already. All right, rolled 278. That is actually e enough guaranteed for removal plus relic. Is that what we end up buying at the shop? <laughs> Souvenir remove? remove an ear. Exhume's kind of interesting. Getting back an exhausted card. 
Oh, we can block the Berserk downside. That's why we didn't upgrade it. Could also take the bottle and bottle our barricade. Or bottle our Berserk. I'd probably bottle barricade over bottling Berserk. But I think I prefer the Clockwork Souvenir. Is Discovery better than a Remove? That's my question. I don't think it is. Please do not remove your ears, Twitch chat. Alright, do I need help in this fight? I'm gonna go with probably. So I'm thinking we chuck the explosive potion and drink the entropic brew here. So I really don't like this turn one very much, nor this matchup that much. Well, actually, because we can play Berserk for free. Spot weakness will always work. Maybe it's not as bad as I think. Got lots of health, and I'm resting after this anyway. No, let's not use the potions yet. No need to panic here. Upgrade the defend, play Carnage. Not worth bashing, because we're going to play the Shockwave. Wounds are adding up, though. So how do we want this to go? Definitely got a spot weakness before I pummel. I want a shockwave before I pummel, too. So we go, what, spot weakness, defend, then play the berserk? Yes. That way we're more likely to get the bummy hand to hit the shockwave here. Big sleepy boy, thanks for the... Six months in advance of support. Heck yeah. Appreciate you spending down like that. Saves you money, too. This Twitch will give you a discount, and I think I get the same amount of money for those six months. Alright, well, when the explosive potion alone saves this much health, I think that's worth using. Don't have to drink the Entropic, though. So we can pick up Strength and now have Strength Entropic. That's great. Ancient Tea Set's not bad, either. Two energy after visiting a rest site. Don't think we want these cards. I think it'd be cool if there was a, a relic that gave you rerolls of some kind. Like, that let you reroll card rewards or shops or something. Does this deck want orange pellets? Less so now that we have Souvenir. But I mean, we wouldn't say no, you know? Alright, who's getting Bash uppercutted? I'm gonna kill the bird first? sure about that. Well, that feels right. Get him. Take the damage over the block because the block adds days to the draw pile. That's not something we want. Likewise, don't play this defend because it just means one less card I get next turn. Even if I get five block not worth it. This time we'll play it, because it means five health. And there's less crap in the draw pile. That wasn't bad. Second wind is really nice, letting us exhaust non-attack cards in my hand and gaining block per. Really like second wind in barricade decks, generally speaking. 
very good for dealing with enemy statuses. Ornithopter's here to heal us when we use a potion. I'll take that. I'll take that. A little bit more healing. And I think we're definitely on track to go for the Burning Elite here. Why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. So we can actually kill the rat turn one and not become vulnerable here. Or I could play Berserk and not become vulnerable. Kind of our pick, really. I think I'm going to go with the rat killing. Then upgrade second wind and play it. Take zero. Lose the powers, but that's fine too. Just makes this fight a lot easier this way. Get crunched, sir. I've got to decide again. These are all whatever. I think we want the strength potion over a block potion. Damage is king when it comes to beating elites, especially in Act 2 here. Yeah, this is probably the time to use... I'm actually really glad we're not fighting super slavers. This would probably be the time to use not one, but both potions. Although, we heal for using potions, actually, so I probably only just want to use the one this turn. Be at full health. Okay. Let's start with this. 16 to all. This could save me a lot, but... Hmm. Exactly a kill. Don't think we played this berserk. Go uppercut, defend, true grit. Next turn we should be fine. Yeah, get in there, Cleave. Cleave did good work. Don't get in there, berserk. Do get in there, Carnage, and uh, Second Wind. I suppose. Thirteen twice? What? Jesus, that's a lot of damage. Get some more energy, which will probably be appreciated. An upgraded True Grit, which will definitely be appreciated. And another store. Many cards? Or fewer cards? Good old Ori. Look at five card rewards. It's going to be pretty powerful. This deck really, really wants certain other powers, right? We'd love Corruption, Dark Embrace, Feel No Pain. This is a good way to look for these cards. And it may contain upgraded cards, too. So I think we should look at a whole bunch of uh, card rewards. I don't see a whole lot else going on in the shop that's okay. Like, we could take Blood Potion and drink it and then buy a Strength Potion. That's fine, but not very good. What do you got, Ori? Burning Pact's okay. Entrench with Barricade? Double Berserk? Disarm. Yes, Disarm's great. Entrench. Since we already have Barricade, although it's expensive, Entrench is kind of a big deal. Particularly if I also take Burning Pact. Because then we can exhaust the deck down to just the Entrench and we have a win con. That's right, Digital Charmander. The Ori uses the rare, uh, the upgraded card chance of the current act. 
gonna skip these two. No Inflame, no Berserk, no Shockwave. No Warcry. Metallicizing Gremlin Leader. That doesn't seem too bad. Nice damage, by the way. Kill, kill, disarm. Good. Good. This is also good. I'm going to upgrade the defend, not the entrench. Yeah. Take one. Kind of like a free turn almost. Ooh, this turn's not free though. Or is it? Good. There we go. Again. Hmm. We are resting after this. It's not too bad. I don't actually think we need to use the potion just yet. So I think I... I need to guarantee that I can play the shockwave, so I can't leave that up to a 50-50 on the mummy hand. So I think we armaments the barricade, play shockwave, play barricade. Gives me a 50-50 playing spot weakness or bash. If I armaments the barricade, play barricade. Then it's a two-thirds chance. Okay, so we armor upgrade the barricade and then play the barricade. Is the play here. So we have two energy left. Okay, we get both the Spot Weakness and the Shockwave. Skip the Bash. Good. That's the best result we can get here. We take 19 damage, go to 20. That's not that bad. That's not too bad. Keep you vuln or do some damage. Let's do some damage. Trench. So at this point, we don't even care if we get attacked next turn because we can just do this. Hit me. See if I care. Maybe you set up Nunchaku for the Bronze Automaton, but I'm really not afraid of the Bronze Automaton. Our, uh, our trick is going to work really well against Tomato. And you know what? It works even better with a headbutt to put the Entrench back on top of the deck. So let's take an event here over a combat. There's a couple of really good events we could get, like a card removal. Is very good. Get rid of the last strike in the deck. Let's do it. And let's rest. 22 health here. Play the barricade turn one. That's great. I can play entrench and then second win. Get rid of spot weakness. I think that's fine. I don't care about spot weakness in this fight. I mean, it would be convenient to have, but it's absolutely not required. I think we need to use this potion either. 
I'm very happy to get rid of the Carnage as well. We want to lose every card that isn't Entrench, really. All of them. Zerk stolen. I really need to do that in play, actually. Do I just not bother with Shockwave? No, I want to play it because I want it to destroy itself. I'm just going to go True Grit Shockwave here. Yes. focus on killing this one first, because I do actually really want that Berserk in play. Quite desperately. This is tricky. I don't know if we're doing this fast enough. The good news is we have a lot of health. So even if we're not actually doing it fast enough, we can get somewhere. All right, we gotta do this. Good. Okay, Hyper Beam is next turn. So it's time to find a solution. This is True Grit and Trench Headbutt. Also do True Grit, True Grit Headbutt. Destroy second wind and defend the same amount of block, but gets one more card exhausted. Doesn't put the entrench on top, but I'm okay with that. Okay. I could also entrench rather than playing the headbutt. Then we get 18 more block. That's even better. Do that. I don't know why I didn't think of that originally. Ignore me. Supplies full, not weak. Between Pummel Strike and Burning Pack, we can guaranteed get Entrench into our hand here. Let's destroy the Uppercut first. There's Entrench. So let's just True Grit the True Grit and Entrench. Lock for 90, and we'll be spiraling out of control here really quick. Now we can upgrade the Entrench. So we can do Entrench... Headbutt, the Entrench, Shrug, Entrench again. And shenanigans have ensued. Life's tough in the trenches. Of course, we have to do uh, kind of a slow kill here. We don't actually have any scaling offensively because I deleted it all to get defensive unlimited scaling. So now we just kind of do this. Yeah, we wanted a body slam, but we only saw unupgraded body slams. It was not desirable. Yeah, we didn't even get any strength from spot weakness, because I deleted the spot weakness too.
Had to go. GG. Alright, that was a fun way to kill Runs of Here's Corruption. Or Exhum. Corruption's kind of weird with the Entrench, because this actually... This deck really wants to just play one card over and over again. So I don't think this Corruption helps very much. We don't even have the Exhaust Energies that would make it, like, really good immediately. What about Exhum? Get back Shockwave or Disarm or something? Exhum's okay. I'm thinking Exhum. Not a very good Pandora's box. There's no defense and strikes left of the deck. You can either take three relics and an unremovable curse and six max health and nine gold, or we can say double effectiveness of potions. The bell from hell. There's definitely a few relics we could get that would be really, really good. Despite the curse, and we can exhaust the curse easily enough. We got second wind and other stuff. Uh, I think we saw potion belt in an early store, didn't we? Maybe that was last run. If we find Potion Belt, Sacred Bark's gonna be, like, really good. And if we don't, it won't be. Could drink the brew now to see what's in there. That's a fun way to, to, to look at it. Honestly, looking at this deck, we're gonna be able to trounce most foes and then have some difficulty with a few. Jake says, how do you handle taking Pandora's box and not liking what you roll into and losing all motivation to play? You have to, it's a, it's a puzzle. When you open the box, the puzzle you're presented with is in the fewest steps possible, how do you convert what you got in what you, into what you wanted? So if you got like three bad cards and five good ones, you got to remove the bad ones, upgrade the good ones. If you got a whole bunch of nonsense, uh, then what, what card could you add to like turn it into good stuff suddenly. But that's how I look at it. Look at it as a, as a puzzle. In, in how many... In the fewest steps possible, how do you convert this into a winning deck? So a potion belt on floor 11. Uh, thank you, Zuthus. Ooh, war paint, toxic egg, mango? Wait a minute. Toxic Egg? Yes! Doesn't upgrade the Entrench, sadly, or the Armaments, but I'm very, very, very happy with these relics overall. We fought our Burning Elite Neck, too, because we're champs. Now I can do three Elites. Or skip the... <coughs> Excuse me. This is going Orphan of Cthulhu. Uh, the website was built together by um, our community manager and top moderator, Bailey, as well as help with design by Olivia5k. A couple of people in the community came together to create it, and I'm exceedingly thrilled. Would I take a body slam minus at this point? I, I think I would probably consider it. Honestly, the Body Slam is not necessary, though, which means uh, because we can just, we can spot weakness and pommel strike our way to victory. If we've got 999 block, we don't need to win fast. We can just win. And the deck could already do that. So, although we could speed up the, you know, the actual killing of our foes by incorporating something like that. It puts us behind in terms of turns to to get set up properly. I don't know how I feel about that. Ouch. Gotta kill this exploder. No, no. You've gotta be kidding me. Ow. Hmm. Snakey Moses, thanks for five months. Successfully click Bronze Automaton to death, but look at the price of the Curse of the Bell. Explosion will deal 30 damage, so we'll lose 17 health. I guess that's not too bad. Where'd 
Where'd my opponent go? Second win rather than playing the entrench. Can always exhum it. There's an armaments plus. It's also ghostly armor and a shockwave. I don't think we want that shockwave. Ghostly is a pretty good block starter, and that's something we're actually lacking in this deck still, is the ability to get our block up to a large number immediately. So let's change that. Looks like we'll have a lot of fights this act. I like the events of Act 3. Let's look at a couple. Take 999 gold and 12 more max health. Turning this into a very good Darkstone Periaps. That said, rare relics are also very powerful here. Thing is, we can go to two shops this act. I'm just not 100% sure how well I fire in an elite fight with a normality. I have so much health, maybe it barely matters. I'm rich! Can it really be this easy to lose all your money? How about no? Oh, here we go. Oh my good lord. This deck just got stupid. Sundial and the Abacus are here. Glorious. First things first, though. Get rid of one of these. Yes, and yes, and yes to the Shrug, too. There's a, I, I know there's a Body Slam here. We just talked about why we don't actually need the Body Slam. Um, and now we need it even less, because we have an infinite. Ah. So don't be fooled. This is just wastefully adding a card to the deck. Warcry looks good, though. I actually like Warcry for um, normality control a little bit, too. You can put the normality on top, or... Not. Um, and I would like to buy a potion. I'm not a thinking ahead. It's like a reusable war cry. A lot of money, though. And no, I don't think so. Five strength potion could be very good, especially against, say, Reptomancer. If I were hypothetically concerned about a Reptomancer. Winky face. I really dare fight an elite. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, we'll take the flex spot. All right, Darklings, try not to kill me. Oof. Not a good start here. All right, I'm gonna use the flex potion now, actually. I'm sufficiently scared of these three. Jerks. I can exhume Warcry to put the normality out of my hand. That's funny. I'm just going to Shockwave True Grit, take an absolute buttload of damage. Ugh. This is the maximum they can do. The middle one can't multi attack, only the front and the back one can. Jerks. Turn, give me the cleave back then. Okay. 
24 twice is 48. Good. Iron Wave Plus is not actually terrible, but not helpful here. All right, let's hope our draws are a little better here. It's Reptomancer. That's not good, but drawing second win turn one is great. That's perfect. And we can kill one dagger. Okay, good. Good. Definitely happy with that turn one. Less happy with his turn two, but that's okay. I think this is definitely the time to drink the Entropic Brew. And use the block pot. Speed pot, skill pot. Speed pot here is actually really good. Helps a lot in the future too, but I think it's going to be used right now. For that five dexterity here. True get the defend, play the barricade. Uppercut's going to be free, or I can... Block for 13. Do it the other way. Ouch. Oh, please stop. Shoot. Second Wind Havoc Rage. Havoc, huh? Spooky. Probably want to ghostly first in case we hit entrench. Could spot weakness first as well. In case we hit an attack, but. I won't be able to play much else, so I don't think we're going to play the spot here. Actually, that's true. We got Nunchaku. Nice. Of course, now I can't play the Shockwave, because I played the thingy. I think that's still fine, though. be a mistake. Shoot. Yeah. Well, that's why I shouldn't have played Spot Weakness. Oh well. As long as we can hold on through this fight, we'll be alright. Should be a lot easier next turn. Zoom here, shrug, sure. Okay, a moment of respite. Respite. Rasputin. Figured that might happen. Hmm, no entrench is gonna be a problem. Might have just completely screwed myself, actually. Uh, no, we can just still go infinite without entrench. Wow, there's a lot of garbage in the deck. Hmm. Headbutt solves a lot of problems here. It sure does. Alright. 
think we get away with this. I sure hope we do. It's a lot of block. And a lot of cards destroyed. Good, good. 23 kills you cleanly. Kill this one as well. Headbutt the second wind? Yeah. Slowly accumulating block here. This fight definitely a little awkward because the we're racing against the clock here with the wounds being added. Seems to be victorious though. Perfect. Ish. Actually, that should have been Carnage Second Wind. This is fine, though. Fourteen twice. All right. See, with a Dark Embrace, this would be such a better deck. Wrong order there. Okay, now we just go for the kill on her. Whew. The fight. Zoom plus or Shrug plus? A shrug plus. One more for the road. Yeah, we made it. Uh, I probably means I won't mess with another elite, although knowing it's not Reptomancer, maybe we'll be fine here. It's gonna depend on our ability to get out of the next few fights without losing too much health. actually the worst result. I would have rather gotten cursed there. Mind you, I don't want a curse, but it would have been better than taking all that damage. Upgrade. The Strunkening. So I don't really want to strike it unless I can change the intent away from Curse after doing so. So. 
Or if you can kill. That's also a good reason to hit it. Take one more war cry plus. It's free after all. We'll fight the maw. Looking for the man who shot me maw. No big hit, thankfully. Zerk. Or barricade, rather. I miss you. Please come back. I played too many cards in this deck. I didn't realize we had 31. Without a Dark Embrace, it's going to be really hard to win this. Oh, heck. Which we like ass to. I don't think we're going to make it far. It's just not enough. Ghostly Armor Go on purpose here. At this point, every card we can lose is, per is uh, helpful. Maw, meanwhile, is scaling up its damage pretty enormously. Nothing we're actually afraid of. But uh, this enemy can definitely get out of control. If you're not careful. 21 times 6. Like, that's a lot of damage. A ton of damage. Okay, um, I think that helps. Double entrench. I'm gonna risk it. Fight the nemesis. I think I can make that work. Especially with turn one barricade, good. Okay. Didn't get killed. Good. Very good. Okay. Cool. I think we we risked it and we won. We're already safe in this fight now with two entrenches. That feels good. Feels really good. Gonna get a lot of burns added to the deck, but uh, we can work around that. I don't think I want to delete too many cards in this time because of the burns. Perfect. Sarm second. Damage will be slow and steady here. That's all right. It's not like we're at any threat of dying. Sp 
spot. Uppercut, twin strike. This turn we probably want to headbutt our best damage card. Feel the need to put Entrench on top. Seems fine. That's a lot of burns, man. This damage card is Twin Strike. I'm wondering if Body Slam may be necessary for, like, Spear and Shield. Again, I I'd rather just have a Dark Embrace. That's what we need more than a Body Slam. We need more draw. Not a, a new damage card. Pervious would be really good too. Panic button. Kind of inevitable. Toasty. There's even more being added now. Look at all these burns. Burn, baby, burn. Yeah, Karen's ashes that we saw earlier would have been really nice. Beat on the bones pretty good. That'll help us get back to health. Don't know if I want one more shrug. I think we don't. I think we skip that. <laughs> Excuse me. Double orb walkers. It's a fight that requires a lot of damage very fast. We definitely don't have what it takes to fight these nerds. I am out of here. No way, man. Absolutely no way. Let's uh let's take rest site shop combat. I'm gonna recall before I go to the shop too. I think we have good enough potions. I don't have to sleep here. With meat on the bone, I don't want to. Strange Spoon. I don't think we want that. Bird Face Turn is nice healing-ish. Fairy in a Bottle is nice. Don't think this deck wants Mayhem. It definitely wants to remove the other normal normality. Hey, you sank TW. Yes, unfortunately the extension is down today. I'm taking this fairy. That's a nice insurance policy. Do I want the bird face turn? I think I'd rather have 300 gold in the last shop. We only have a couple of powers. Berserk and Barricade. I'm not going to pick up a Metallicize here. Nor a Strange Boon. Okay. I could, I could buy the Dreamcatcher to get two more card rewards. We get one before the bosses and one in Act 4. So this is two additional card picks. It's like two-fifths of an Ori. That's kind of bad. But better than nothing. I think I'd still rather have more money in Last Act. Look at potions and such. Uh-oh, Transient. Seven energy turn one? Thanks, uh, T-Set? Yeah, thanks, T set. So we got Ghostly Armor and Trench Barricade Bash. Take a little bit, but not too much. Is 
Nothing to exhume, alas. I suppose I'm fine with that. Oh, you son of a gun. I was afraid we might have this happen. Well, I'm glad, uh, glad I bought the fairy in a bottle. Uh, it's nothing the elixir does here. Jerk. matchup ever. Jesus. Just the worst. Okay, get some more block going here, please. Zephzeora, thanks for the 48 person raid. Welcome, welcome. One and all, you're catching us uh, towards the tail end of a, a bit of a struggle bus ironclad run here in Slay the Spire. It's like almost working. Managed not to die to transient, barely. And I'm not happy about it. Not one bit. Last Shrug Plus. We've seen so many of these, but we only need the two. No Dark Embraces. Alright, the good news is we should be able to beat Time Eater without too much difficulty. And we'll heal from Meat on the Bone after the Time Eater. Although it will depend on where exactly Barricade is in the draw pile. Storm or Shockwave? I think I'm on a Shockwave here. Okay, that's good. Unfortunately, Zoom got made free. Got nothing to Zoom, though. I think we've stabilized here. Let's get rid of two cards. Stay entrench, then war cry. Shuffle through the draw pile here. Get rid of this and block. Cards next turn if I play the Berserk? I don't think so. Want three cards for this? Yeah, because we can go Shrug, Entrench, Headbutt the Entrench. Pretty good. I guess Entrench, Headbutt would have been a fine two cards. Uh, here we want to exhume the Disarm. Keep lowering Time Eater's strength here. Alright, I think we're fine. So we'll heal for 18 at the end of this fight, and that should be enough health for the next boss. Both Donu Deka and... Um, Awaken One shouldn't be too bad. The question is, can we make this thing work in Act 4? I don't know. I think we're missing some important pieces for that. Mm-hmm. 
Let's lose some cards. Almost there. It's definitely where a, uh, a body slam would, again, would let us kill very easily at this point, but it would have made it more difficult to get to this point in the first place. Kind of like a catch-22. There we go. Finally upgrade the spot. No longer need both in trenches. Or both shrugs. When in doubt, delete cards. Eventually, we want to get to this place. And suddenly, where before we had been obscenely slow, now we instantly win. Bonk. All right, 50 health for the Awakened One. Matty Wales, thanks for the tier one sub. And Awakened One, thanks for the turn one barricade. Raw. Seems pretty hype. I'll take it. Gotta be careful, though. The cultists could kill me quickly if I don't uh, have an answer to them. I think we have a lot of buffer health here. I'm going to play the Berserk. Be a fool not to. Go Ghostly... Headbutt, then Uppercut Berserk... Uh, then Berserk Uppercut Carnage. Yeah, put the Shrug Plus on top. Put the Shrug Plus on top. That'll just kill one of them anyway. Okay. This would be 42 plus 13, yes. Definitely take some. Next turn could be really scary, though. Actually, if we dead draw, we're just gonna die. I don't think that's gonna happen, though. That helps. That helps, too. Okay, we're not dead. We are definitely injured, though. Uh, let me quick math. It's a shockwave, cleave, twin strike. Kill the cultist. We do 16 plus 24. Yes. Yes, we do. We do kill. Okay, I think we skip the disarm then. Put that on top. We do that. Get rid of this cultist right now. Let's 
go to 12. Zoom. Disarm, do that again? Yes. A little worried here. Three of these. Okay, looks like we're good. Woo! Close. Definitely got close there. Going to Act 4, Twitch chat. We are going to Act 4. Also means we're going to be at full health. bunch of stuff now. We don't need any of these. I think want to set up these two relics for Act 4 also. supposed to get rid of every shrug. Set up Nunchaku. So I don't want to do too much per hit here. So headbutt, pommel, headbutt. And we can stall turns if we need to to let the Awakened One regenerate. Two, just go headbutt, twin strike. Perfect. Okay. We are on to act four. Two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread. Keep you felt throughout the room is this the heart of the spire, the source of this struggle boss. Just managing to get most of the way regardless. Very curious to see if we can round this out at the end here. We do have 107 hit points and 400 gold going into this shop, which gives me hope. Aha! At long last, our nightmare is over. There is a Dark Embrace here. And a Frozen Eye. I'll just be taking those. Um, and a Swift Potion. And a Deep Breath. I did not... I was going to buy the Bloodletting. I didn't even notice the Deep Breath. Get in here, Deep Breath. Deep Breath shuffles the draw pile into the discard pile. We can, with Frozen Eye, know whether we want to do that or not. What a store, hey? I think we're going to make it just fine, Twitch chat. A sigh of relief is breathed. Although... Next turn looks brutal. good draw for this fight? No, definitely not. 
It's actually very bad. Probably take 50 damage. Yeah, I can't even get to the deep breath to reset it. Potion time. I think that potion is going to be next turn. We're going to draw these three, then these three. We get to second win the, the Curse the Bell and the Burns, at least. That'll be nice. Famas, thanks for 29 months of support. That's right, we want to take 54 damage for meat value anyway. Smorts. Do I want to play the bash here? I think I want the extra energy next turn, probably. So don't play bash. So removing that artifact could matter. Still upgrade the bash. You talking about the original Cozy Cheer Grass Cat that, or the one that I currently use? Because I can I can tell you one of those two things, uh, the, but not the other. Well, I can give you a useful answer to one of those two things, but not the other. The original Cozy Chair, the one that we've got a little emoticon of in the corner there, I got from a local furniture store about 15 years ago. So you'd need a time machine and a plane to get one. Or maybe just a time machine, depending. I could do shockwave. Actually, putting shockwave on top is reasonable. God, next turn's bad too. So yeah, it looks like we swift potion. Yeah, let's swift potion now. And then war cry. Um, we're gonna play the uppercut actually. Uppercut, Shockwave, Second Wind. Looks good. Next turn looks a bit better. Guess we'll get rid of Spot Weakness. for five more block this turn. Turns a bit tricky, but I think we can make it work. I'm gonna play that headbutt anyway, right? Yeah. Good, give him a cleave. Hmm. Maybe time to use the the deep breath here. So I can shrug, shrug, war cry, and then we can deep breath. I could have some weird effects on our draw, though, but it will give me two energy immediately and six more block, which seems kind of important. a card if I wanted to. I don't see a reason to. So, let's do this first. 
Okay, barricade's still pretty far down. That's okay, though. We want to delete a card. Let's see, next turn we're drawing this. We have Dark Embrace in play, too. Don't forget. Uh, this is 38 damage, right? So we want a True Grit, Headbutt, Disarm. Burning Pack won't be good enough. Okay. Probably Headbutt the Deep Breath, actually. I don't want to play it immediately, though. This is a pretty respite turn. Yeah, we're gonna deep breath here. Did not get me any closer to barricade. Okay. Exhaust two. Shoot, this is a problem. Actually, no, we need to do some damage here. Oh, next turn is screwed. Oh, man. Dang it. take so much damage next turn. Yeah, the barricade deck with the unreachable barricade is uh, definitely not something I was happy about. We just need to delete as many cards as we want, as we can, though. That's the, the key to winning this. And we might need the elixir next turn. We'll see. Turn back around. Lastly, use Bash. Use Bash. He's both exhausted. Raw seven. It's gonna help. Yeah, the unreachable barricade definitely has been a trick, though. On this turn, I can reach it, but I don't know if I can play it. Hilariously, we don't actually need the barricade. Maybe that's the secret here. The secret is actually just destroy all the cards. And screw the barricade. I think that's it. Check this out. But second wind, and then burning pact. The uppercut? Yes. And then just second wind this entire hand. And I could exhume barricade if I really want to. Are we there? I'm already infinite. Okay. GG, nerds. Keeping the elixir is a very big deal for heart. Any nine gamers? Yeah, but what if we had a body slam? That's right. Of energy too, I can infinitely bash. That's extra cute. Uh, I could try to set up Sundial. I don't think I care. Or not Sundial, but the uh, Ninchaku. I do care about Sundial. Put that too. And two more health. We have 95 health for the heart fight. <laughs> Where's there, you ask? That's a good question. It's a long story, kid. All right. Um, I actually feel really good about heart now. I think we have very good odds going into this heart fight. Let's take a look at the drop pile here. Dark Embrace and, Bar and Barricade are both a little far down, but not too bad. 
when I've got some good draw power early here. Clockwork Souvenir will block Vulnerable, so we can actually just tank the entire uh, first attack cycle of the heart. As always, the main goal here, delete every card that we can. Including the ghostly armor. We're just going to let it get deleted on purpose here. I want the armaments and the true to go together. So I think I just stop here, huh? Where that. Could use Warcry to essentially discard armaments, but I don't know if I actually want to do that. Mm, actually, yes, I do. Also, lets me upgrade the Entrench, which actually helps. Big hit first. We'll take zero damage from the next hit because of Disarm. Could play Berserk here, but it means taking 20-ish additional damage. I don't think I want that. But maybe I do. Because knowing that Disarm reduces its damage to zero next turn. And that I'll be drawing Barricade and then Dark Embrace shortly after that. Well, actually, it looks like it could be difficult to get going. I'm not going to, but it's so much energy. Hmm. Pretty funny to use the Souvenir to block Vulnerable, then just make myself vulnerable again. This feels correct, though. Yeah, I think it is correct. Now, I draw a Bash Void here, that's fine. Okay. Meat on the bone, man. Meat on the bone. That's zero times 15, no prob. Tain one block, doesn't matter. Great turn to draw a shockwave. Not a good turn for exhuming. Of course, slime gets made free. That's fine. I think we need to deep breath. We get to double entrench next turn, that'll hopefully do it. Helps too. I think we're there. Arma defend entrench entrench. That feels right. Yeah, that feels right. I almost just want to elixir this hand. Yeah, I do. Get rid of all four of those. The only attack we need is the pommel strike. Get 
rid of most of the things. Trench second wins? Or actually no, just just second wins. As before, just delete everything. Then we should be there basically immediately. Not quite yet. The deep infinite is pummel strike deep breath, so I don't need any of the cards in my hands. An upgraded true grip is fine. Don't even need entrench anymore? No, we don't. go. Holy heck, Twitch chat. What a hard-fought victory this one was. I was very sure we were going to die against uh, when we fought Transient. But we managed to pull it out into a victory here using the, the hot nonsense that was last-minute Dark Embrace. an exhausting run. <laughs> so we can just get as much block as I want. We've got plenty already, though. Speed this up slightly by, uh, splorting weaknesses. Infinite weakness. Yeah, exactly, Zeknar. Low front load draw clad is always so spooky late game. Really makes us grateful we, we took and upgraded this pommel strike. This was a, a very early pick and upgrade, but it ended up being really crucial to uh, to this actually working late game. It's kind of cool. What's giving me energy? This relic right here, the sundial. Every three times we shuffle our draw pile, gain two energy. And the Abacus is what's giving us lots and lots of block, which is also every time we shuffle the draw pile, gain six block. The premise of the infinite is that you get down to just a handful of cards in the deck. That way you can draw the same few cards over and over again, shuffle one or two cards into the deck over and over again, and repeatedly activate these relics. Commons win games, they do. They do. You might even say they're commonly useful. GG, everybody. What a run. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.